Do God's will today, not mine. I'm going to resist my flesh. And I'm going to do what God called me to do. Because that's why I got saved. People forget that they were cleansed from their sins. That's what it says in here. That's where they're short slain. Look what it says. And godliness with brotherly affection. Yes. And brotherly affection, not only brotherly, but love for everyone. Do you love the lost and dying world enough to say, you know what? I want to make a mock in that world. Yes. I don't want to follow their ways. I want to follow God's ways. And if it causes me some pain yeah. and I take it for Jesus, that's what it was supposed to do. Because the Bible tells us that we have to suffer for him too. Yeah. We just want to mingle in with the world as Christians. Oh, I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to get too stepped on. So I'm just going to accept this and yeah. accept that and say this and say that. Just so I don't have to like get persecuted. You know what I'm talking about, right? They mix. But that's not the Bible, okay? That's the flesh saying, I want to be accepted by everybody. Look, you can't please God and people at the same time. It ain't going to happen in this world. The morals that you derive from this Bible that you learn about when you come to Bible study and you read the Word of God, are going to be, you're going to be held accountable for them values when you go before him. Right. You can't say, oh, I was ignorant. Oh, oh God, you know, you're just so gracious and love me. No, I empowered you Amen. to live the way I, I called you to live. Amen. So do it. And make a mark in this world because the way the, the, the world is more united than the church. <laughs> People are more kinder in the world than they are in church. It's a sin what's going on in churches. God's going to clean the house up, and I can't wait for him to do it. Amen. When there's no more denominations, when everybody's saying, look, be quiet, we're reading the Bible. Amen. You don't like it, we'll go to somewhere else, and when you go somewhere else, you don't like it, we're reading the Bible. We're not just singing and dancing and making you feel good. When the churches are in unity. When it's like God's word is what dominates this church. Amen. Jesus Christ dominates this church. Amen. Not my flesh and my will. Amen. We need to what, get back in line as Christians. Yep. And say, listen, I'm saved. God sanctified me. I'm supposed to live a certain way and I'm going to do it. Come hell or high water, I ain't going to live casual. You know what? Casual Christians, the devil loves them. Hey, yeah. You're saved? <laughs> Never know it. Because let me tell you something. When an internal change happens to a believer, it starts to show up outwardly. It starts to show up. And if it's not showing up, it's because nothing internally ever happened. That's Bible. That's truth. And it's the truth that will set you free from your sin nature. People want their sin nature and loving Jesus too. Yeah. I'm going to do all this stuff. I'm going to do this and do that and do this, but oh, I love Jesus too because he just loves me unconditionally and he says I can do whatever I want. Nope. You were bought with a price, the Bible said. You are not your own anymore. That's right. You belong to Jesus now. Yeah. <laughs> now it says the more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge. Look, the more what? Productive and useful. You can tell people that are not useful. They come, they go. They come, they go. No use. Look. In your knowledge of our Lord Jesus. But those who fail, listen now. Listen what it says in the Bible. Listen. And if it's touching your heart, good. 
But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind. So all this stuff that it tells you to develop in your life, if you're not developing that way, you're short-sighted or blind, even as a Christian. Look. <laughs> Forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. What does that mean, being cleansed from my old sins? Forgetting that I'm even saved from my old sin nature. Forgetting that because I have no moral values. I'm not denying myself. I have no self-control. I have no patience or endurance. So I must have forgot that I was saved. That's what it's saying. Tell them so I, I must have forgot that I'm saved. None of these things are coming into play in my life. I'm just one miserable human being that thinks I'm saved by Jesus' blood. Oh, when you're saved, it says, look what it says. So dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Why would he say that? Why would he tell us to work hard to prove it? That's right. To prove, even prove it to myself. I have to prove to myself that I have the Spirit of God in me. How? By living godly. By not being immoral. By doing all these things. It proves to me that I have the Spirit of God living in me. Other than that, I'm, not having to, I'm forgetting that I'm saved. Because my flesh is just taken over. I forgot. I forgot that Jesus died for all my sins. That's why I keep doing it. That's what it means. Look. But those who fail to develop in this way, develop in what way? Do I have to go back and read it again? Look. Generous provision of moral excellence. Moral excellence with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with patient endurance, and patient endurance with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love for everyone. Now, you're a Christian. Are you, are you still a hater? You go out there in the world and you are you a hater? You still hate people? Do you hate what people are doing? They're in my way. I can't believe those heathen, those unbelievers. Look at the way they're acting. Are you still a hater? Did Jesus act like that? No. No, he came to seek and save that what was lost. If you have the very life of God beating in your heart, you're not going to act that way. So what I have to prove to myself from somebody who comes that just grinds me, <laughs> that I just can't stand being around, and here they come. Weaseling their way in, right? You know who sent them? God did. Said, okay, now prove that you belong to me by being patient and kind and loving to them, even though they're hating you. That's proof that I'm saved, that I have the Spirit of God living in me. Amen. And then, you know what? That gives you an overwhelming sense of well-being. Say, hey, you know what? Yeah, there's got to be something different, right? I could never do that before. Amen. I could never buy my enemy a sandwich. Never. I could never tell my enemy I'm going to pray for you. Oh, I might be able to say it, I'm going to pray for you. But really, I'm hoping to get hit by something on the way out. I can say it out with me. But has there been a conversion in my heart, in my spirit? That's what Pete is trying to get at. Because yep. there's a lot of people in church that aren't going to heaven, I'll tell you right now. Yeah. And there's people that never stepped into a church that yeah. are going to be with the Lord. Yep. Because they have the right heart. Yep. So don't think because somebody walks into church that they're all saved in Christian brothers and sisters. That's a lie. Jesus said, prove by the way you live that you've changed. Prove by the way you live that you believe in Jesus and he's your Lord and Savior. That's one of the things we have to learn. All right. You say you belong to Jesus. How are you living? <clears throat> How's your lifestyle? Are you changed? Are you living for God or are you living for self still? Prove. Because guess who's watching God's watching, number one. The devil's definitely watching. 
Christian brothers and sisters are watching, and the unbelieving world is definitely hawking in on you. Yeah. So, oh, you want to come to church? Yeah, and then you're all participating in all that stuff that they that God tells us not to. Right. Oh, but can I bring you to church with me? That's from who? Satan. And he's in the church. And the only way you're going to know if he's in the church or not in the church is by his word, by knowing the word of God. Amen. Now it says, do these things and you will never walk. Look at it says, verse 10, Dear brothers, work hard to prove you really are among those God has called the chosen. Do these things you never fall away. Now, you know you start an exercise program, right? You take your supplement, you make go to the gym, you start doing, right? You're doing what you call it, what you're supposed to do. You're getting up, you're drinking the right amount of fluids, you're eating the right food, you're going to the gym, you're making the call, you're, you're making the payments to the gym, right? <laughs> but there's things you have to do, right? You have to what? Say no to certain things. You gotta get enough of sleep. In other words, so you can keep doing that. What happens when you stop getting enough sleep, eating the right food, taking the right vitamins? What happens? You end up falling away, right? right? And then you end up saying, hey, keep the, the, the gym becomes the membership fee. But I don't go anymore. I must have fell away. Right. So I'm not maintaining that. I know myself because I do it. But then I, you know, I pay the price for that when I fall away. And when I fall away from God, I pay a price from that too. Yeah. Yeah. So I have to practice all these moral excellence, knowledge, get the right knowledge, I gotta have self-control, I gotta practice all these principles in my life so I don't what? Fall away and forget that I'm saved. Amen. By doing these things, it just reaffirms that I am. We get the principle? Yes. That's what it's talking about. Yes. Your lifestyle will prove how much you believe. Yes. Amen. Your lifestyle will prove how much you believe in God and His Word. Your lifestyle will prove it, yep. and your lifestyle will prove who belongs to the devil and who belongs to Jesus. Right. Your lifestyle will show it. When we live in a backslidden condition in moments of weaknesses like Paul was talking about, it wasn't his lifestyle. It was moments of weakness that he fell into his flesh. It wasn't a consistent lifestyle of a sin, Amen. of sins. Amen. There was moments of weaknesses. People get this all twisted up and just live that way. That's right. That's apostasy in the church. That's right. Nobody's teaching the right stuff. Amen. Oh, there's really nothing you can do. It tells us there's all, there's all kinds of things we can do. Work hard to prove that you're saved. Oh, I don't want to step on anybody's toes because through gates am I saved through faith, not in hope. It's a gift from God. Yeah, it is a gift from God. The God, God gave you a gift and saved you so you didn't have to live in your sinful nature no more. That's why he saved you. Amen. Why are you still living in your sinful nature? Why do I need to get saved? Saved from what? I don't know about you, but I believe the Bible. I listen to a lot of different things on the airwaves and the TVs and all this. But I know this Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And I know what happens when I rebel against God. I go into captivity. Just like it says in the Old Testament, captivity to what? Captivity to my flesh. It holds me in bondage again. It controls me all over again. All right, are we getting this so far? Yes. Okay. Because we don't, you don't want to forget that you're cleansed from your sins, right? Right. You know that Jesus died on the cross so you don't have to have a sin nature no more. You don't have to operate in that right. anymore. <clears throat> well, if all my sins are forgiven and I'm washed in the blood of Christ, why do I keep wanting to do that? Maybe I just don't believe that I am washed. I'm going to prove to myself that I am by living this way. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my supplements today. I'm gonna be morally right in my head. I'm not gonna be lustful and crazy and desiring things that hurt me anymore. Amen. I'm gonna give it to God. I'm gonna let Him control me. Amen. I'm not gonna go listen to some stupid radio show or some nonsense that the world tries to tell us that replaces God. The world tries to replace God with talk shows and radio hosts and all this other nonsense saying, I'm going to listen to that instead of God. Amen. That ain't going to happen here, folks. As long as you keep coming here, you're going to hear what's in this book. Amen. And if you don't like it, take it up with God, not with me. Amen? Amen. Amen. Am I, am I your enemy because I tell you the truth? No. 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 Amen. Because listen, I gotta answer to God. He's like holds me accountable. Much is given, much is required. He's given me a lot of information in this book. And he says, John, you know what? Go and live that way and prove that it can be done through me. Amen. So that's that's a high call. Anybody who wants to lead or teach, you better examine them real close. Amen. And see how they're living. And see what they're overcoming and what they're not overcoming. Because if they're not, that means they're not living under Christ's rule and authority. But they got a lot of, they know everything about this book. But none of it is in here. It's up here, it's never in here. Can't deny myself anything. Gotta have what I want when I want it. When my flesh is hungry, I'm getting it. I don't know, that's not what the Bible says. Right. Much is given, much is required, and you're accountable Amen. to live a life worthy of your call, it says. It's a high call. It is a high call. And you know what? The more knowledge you have of this, the higher your call is, too. Don't think you're out of the way either. <laughs> no. Because you're not. No. Just a little reminder. <laughs> now, look what it says. Then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior. What's a grand entrance? It's like, wow, I'm entering into that promised land now. Because I'm doing the thing God's required me. I'm in the promised land today. Amen. That's right. I don't have to wait till I go to heaven. No, he's giving that me now. It says, look. Look what it says. Do these things and you never fall away. And then it says, verse 11... Then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is what? Land of rest and peace and prosperity. But if you ain't practicing all these other things, you ain't getting in that here. I'm sorry, it just ain't going to happen. And I can tell by the faces that it ain't happening all the time. A lot of misery in Christianity today. And a lot of backbiting and gossip and hatred. And the Bible says, brotherly affection with love for everyone. Do you love everybody today? Even your enemies? Joe Christians? Do you? Do you love your enemies? Or do you want? Can't wait till they get theirs. You know what God says? Be careful when you say that because you're going to get it instead of them. You cannot mock God. Okay, you'll always harvest what you plant. You'll always reap what you sow. Right. Boy, I don't know what he's talking about. I, I wanted to get some nice, uplifting message so I can just go home and feel great tonight. You should go home and feel great tonight, Amen. knowing that you're getting truth. Because there's a lot of deception out there. Oh, he sounds so good and he's so nice. And he says this, and then the punchline comes in, so you see. Here it comes, and you're going to get ten times back what you give me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who's to say I'm giving it to God if I'm giving it to you, and you're buying a jet with it? <laughs> but I'm going to give it to you anyway. And people just keep giving it. Yeah, I know. I'm like, I can get three dollars out of you. <laughs> you guys are getting jets and houses and mansions and everything. I'm telling the truth, and I'm not going broke. <laughs> I guess I must be doing something right then. Because I didn't come to take your money. No, I came to give you God's truth. 
the Apostle Paul could have got at all fed and money. He says, no, I'm not going to do that because I might make people think that I'm in it for the money. So he never took a dime off of anybody to prove that he didn't, that he was in it for Jesus and not for the money. Go ahead, go take it. Go out there and take it all off them rich people, those rich pastors. Take all the money in the jets and everything and put them in a shack. And we'll see how much they praise God then. <laughs> Who wouldn't be happy and smiling all the time if I had a $3 million mansion, three jets, owned the compact center, had enough money to do whatever I wanted forever? <sighs> <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus is so good. Yeah, no kidding. No, that's not Jesus, that's money. <laughs> so now I understand. So, well, God, why, why do I get to go through this? Because that's what it takes to get to know me. Because if you're getting blessed and you're full of riches, what do you need me for? Unless you're broken. Amen. Jesus came to see sick people. Jesus says, people who aren't sick don't need a doctor. Right. <clears throat> I'm sick and I need a savior. Amen. That's why I keep coming to Jesus. And you know what? He knows that I need to. The only way I'm going to keep coming to him is if he causes brokenness in my life. Amen. So brokenness is actually a blessing because it keeps us close to our Lord. Amen. So we don't get too high and mighty and proud. Remember Paul, Paul said, to keep me from becoming too proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan, to torment me. So I didn't get too proud. So, if you're getting tormented, you should thank God, because he's keeping you in line. Instead of getting bitter, you should be getting better. Amen. Now, look at verse 12. Peter says, therefore, I will always remind you about these things. He's going to say that again and again and again. Yes, we have to be reminded of that because if not, we think we should always be getting blessed and we don't have to follow any, any, any principles of the Bible in our lives. Even though you already know them and are standing firm in the truth you have been taught. And it's only right that I should keep on reminding you as long as I live. For our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me that I must soon leave this earthly life. So I will work hard to make sure you always remember these things after I'm gone. So what did he try to do? Repetition is the key to retention. Didn't I tell you that? If I keep reminding you and reminding you, that's how you retain it. Other than that, you're going to forget that you're cleansing your own sins and you're going to just keep operating in them. So these are the supplements we need to take. So you know what? Maybe I should say, you know what? I should read 2 Peter 1 until I really absorb this and supplement these mm -hmm. things and live my life the way the Bible tells me. Amen. When I'm bitter or when things ain't going my way. When are they going our way? Think about it. When are things always going our way? I know. Right? I know. Man is born into trouble as the sparks fly upward, Job says. We're born into trouble. 